Hello, it's Sarah. So today we're going to do a tutorial on these little mini books that I made. The one sheet mini book. And so to begin, I'm going to tell you what you're going to need to make these. Um, you're going to need a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. So you don't, it doesn't have to be double sided. I'm going to have, I think I'm going to do this one today. I just love it. This one would be cute too, but I think I'm going to do this one. So you need one 12 by 12. That's for the middle page, the middle pages. You're going to need covers. And I have used um, cereal boxes. Like, let's see, this is, um, what is this? This I don't know. I think this is a soda box, like that holds soda. So it's like, it's the thin cardboard. So what I decided to use today is these are, um, file folders from Staples. These are actually heavy duty ones, but they're about the same uh, thickness of cardboard. Um, just something a little, like I've used um, chipboard before, but you don't need chipboard. So just grab a cereal box and use that, or like I'm just going to use these today because I actually ran out of cereal boxes. I've been making quite a few of these. So you need two of those for your covers. You need two cut at three and one eighth by four and a quarter. And the reason it's the one eighth is because when you get this all folded up, I like it to fit just over the edge. I'll show you when, when we get it folded up, how I came to that measurement. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so you need two pieces of cardboard, like thin cardboard, cut to that. And then for your covers, um, a coordinating cardstock that will coordinate with your inside pages. And I cut those usually to, all right, these are gonna be four and one eighth by five and a quarter. So it's actually an inch both ways. So this is gonna be three and an eighth, this is four and an eighth. So you have a half an inch on both sides, half an inch on this side and this side so that you can wrap the covers. I'll show you how to do that. So you need two coordinating pieces of paper for the cover. So this is going to be my cover. Actually, this would make a very cute cover too. But this is what I'm going to do today. Then you're going to need, I'm cutting um, my tags from that same um, file folder. So the tags are actually going to be cut two and a quarter. You need three of those by three and three quarters. So cut your tags <clears throat> from card. You could use a cardboard box. It's just that it's going to have, you know, or you could just cut them from coordinating cardstock too. I mean, it's fine. Or you don't need tags, but I'm using um, the manila file folders. They're really handy to have. They're great because especially the heavy duty ones. All right. And then for your spine, I actually use um, sticky back canvas. And that's just because I have it, and it's the Claudine Helmuth I'll show you. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm a little congested. This is the Studio Sticky Back Canvas by Claudine Helmuth. And I think I got this at, not. I think it was Ellen Hudson online. Uh, my local craft stores don't sell it, but you can get it online. Um... And if you put it in Google, it'll come up with places you can get it. So you need to cut your spine uh, one and one quarter by four and one eighth. And that's because that's the length of the spine. And it's about a half an inch on both sides and then a little for the back. I use the back canvas. But you could also just use a coordinating piece of cardstock. And then I would just like wrap a pencil around it to give it that bend. So you don't need sticky back canvas. This will work just fine. It's just to cover the um, the binding, like cover it where it all um, comes together. And you could use this just fine. It would, it would work. And just glue. Or you could even score it in the middle at half an inch and one and a quarter and, and three quarters. If you score that. Actually, maybe we'll do that because that would probably be good. All right. What else? You're definitely, I'm going to put these aside, you're going to need a scoreboard, and I love the Martha Stewart one. I've seen other scoreboards out there, and they have weird markings, like this 
has um, every quarter inch and every eighth of an inch um, are score lines. And it's just really easy to follow. I like it. And it comes in the 12 by 12 size. So you're going to need that. And a paper cutter. Definitely a paper cutter. You should, that's a very good tool to have in your um, <clears throat> supplies. You're always going to need a paper cutter. And I've tried a couple different kinds. The one with the little wire, I never do well because I'm too rough. I always fray the wire, but this one works good for me. It's just a Fiskars paper cutter. So, all right. Um, I think that's it. You're going to need a little ribbon, actually. You definitely need ribbon for this little part. The part that ties the book closed because once if it gets a little stuffed you're going to want to tie it closed so that's about 16 inches of like a medium width it's not too thick this one's the next width up because i think i like to put that here so but this is all extra stuff you can embellish however you want but i mean you should probably put have at least something to tie it with um, and then I also put an eyelet on there and a, and a little place uh, as a little place to hang a charm. So um, those are the supplies that you're going to need. And then it, any other little embellishments you're going to need. For this one, I'm just going to use um, a little bit of stickles and some um, glossy accents. And, you know, we'll, we'll get you at least finished. And then you can um, go ahead and find stuff in your stash to use for embellishments. So the first thing you want to do is score your paper. I'm going to try and fit this here with my camera. My desk is a little crowded. And for this particular one, because it is a 4x3, um, if you have the pages, some are going to be upside down and some are going to be right way up inside the book. It doesn't, I mean, you can't, there's no way you can get them all. So if you use a, a kind of a pattern like this that it's just it doesn't have a right way or not I mean you're going to be better off let's say yeah flowers are perfect because they can go any which way but if they were letters and things that you know I mean oh that one's not a good example but anyway so just so you know and the, when you fold it you want your pattern side up I'll show you that in a minute so we're going to do three six and nine on this section I'm going to move my I'm just going to move the camera over oopsie because I can't score it and do this with uh, it right in front of me. So three, six, and nine. Three. Be gentle, because I'm too rough. Six. Nine. And you can tear holes right in your paper. And see, then you just swivel it, go to the next edge, and do four and eight. Four and eight. All right? And that's that for the scoreboard. So set that, set that aside and get your um, paper cutter out. And what you want to do for this is, on the, the scores for the 4 and 8, so only 2 scores, we're going to cut those. We're not going to cut on the 3, we're going to cut on the 2, alright? So you're going to go to your 3 inch line, or your 4 inch line, I'm sorry, 4. And you're going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure we get this on camera. Line up your score line on the cutting line. Take your blade and stick it in the three inch section, push down and go all the way up. So what you have is, it starts at the three inch score line and goes all the way up. Then you're gonna slide it over to the other score line and do the opposite. Start at this one, at this three inch, and, and cut down that way. So what you end up with is like a little, kinda like this. It's the meandering style, okay? So now when you're folding, you're going to take this side so you have your pattern side up. Now this happens to be patterned on both sides, but if I only had a one-sided piece of paper, I'm going to go away and come back. Um, you just make sure your pattern is facing up. So you're going to come and start folding. Top, like Pull it towards you and then go over, under, over, under. And then when you get to this part, go under. And then just keep going. Peak Valley, Peak Valley, Peak Valley. You get to there. And sometimes I like, at this point, whoops, as I throw my, <coughs> just kind of score it. Nice and tight. 
and then go under. Whenever you get to the, the next turn, you go under and then just continue until you get to this. And just make your folds nice and tight. <clears throat> I'm going to put this back in front of me and see what we what we can see here. So you end up with this kind of all over the place accordion thing, okay? Oh, in the beginning I forgot to tell you, I am using wet glue for this. I use the Scotch Quick, quick Dry Adhesive. I have used um, my ATG gun. Um, probably that's the only other glue I've used. Um, but wet glue just works better. I, I actually craft in my basement and I live in a humid, I live in New Jersey and it does get quite humid here. And just in general, like for making pockets and stuff, you don't get that, the wet adhesives are just better. They dry fully and you're not gonna have any stickiness or anything come unglued. Um, cause I can show you, I did make these with my ATG gun and I'll show you what happens. See how this is all coming unstuck? My sides are popping up. This is not adhered down. And this is probably just, I mean, I'm pushing it down and it's sticking again. But you won't have that problem when you do it with um, this, the wet glue. Like this is all kind of coming un, it's coming unstuck. So I just trust it. I trust it better. Um, and that's what I would recommend. But you can use whatever you have in your stash for now. It'll be fine. And what you want to do is kind of, it's like if you have a pattern, usually I like to make the first page um, facing me. Like I'll show you what I did. Um, like on the, uh, on my Tim Holtz ones. Let's see. Oh, my phone. Like this. If there's a pattern paper that like you can, oh man, I can't find an example right now that you can make facing you like for the first page I like to that's kind of how I do it I make sure the first page at least is an upside down because there's definitely going to be some upside down ones in through the middle and stuff but like for the first page I don't know why I just kind of try to make the first page at least not be upside down so um but for for right now I, I don't have that problem because we are with a floral page so we're gonna glue now You've got to picture your book, right? Here it is. These are the pages. But in order to make your pockets, you want to leave the tops of some of them open. Obviously, this one can't be a pocket because it's sealed. It's a fold. This could be a pocket. This could be a pocket. But I only have, I do every other page as a pocket. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to set this to the side a little bit just because it seems like I'll have a better access to this to be able to show you. So for the very first page, I'm going to make a pocket. So I'm going to open this up and I'm just going to put a thin line of wet glue on the right side and the bottom. That's all you need. This is going to keep the top open and also this side is already sealed. So then you just take it and fold it over gently. Try to line it up as best you can so that it is straight and if glue squishes out I always have a wet wipe handy um, just to take that extra glue off um, it's a little bit messy but not really so you squish that down okay so now we have our first pocket page this is a pocket I like to let it dry before I really start messing with it but there's your pocket oh it's my son So the next page is just going to be all stuck together. So I'm going to open this. Let's see. Here it is. We go this way. And all this is going to get glued. I just like to make sure my folds are nice and um, tight. So what am I doing? I'm going all around here because I want all this glued down. Really don't squeeze too hard. You don't want too much glue to come squirting out, but that adhesive really does hold well. So even if you have a thin um, layer of it, and again, just try to lay it down nice and straight, push it down, 
get it all stuck together and we should have two pages now so we have our pocket page and the next page is just regular next one's a pocket so we'll open it this way and I mean it's hard by watching me but you'll figure this out as you're doing it you can just pick your book up and look at it and kind of see what you want to do and then for the pocket pages you only just want to put a thin line down the top and I mean the bottom and the side just a thin line and close it gently over nice and straight and squish it down you might have a little glue popping out I don't know all right let's see what we have <clears throat> we have pocket no pocket pocket the next one's a no pocket so we open it I like to make these creases nice and tight and we're gonna put glue all over this side nice thin Uh, Anna Zanero one on YouTube she is fantastic uh, paper crafter she makes the most amazing things out of paper and she uses this scotch wet dry adhesive like for all her mini albums and stuff like that so I just started doing it and I'm so happy I did because they hold and y it's not gonna fall apart I mean it's kind of bonded together um, so that's that's why I why I've decided to switch to that. I love my ATG and I use it, still use it quite a bit, but um, all right. And then the last one is a pocket page. So I'm gonna do one more thin line of glue and just fold over gently and push down, seal that down. See, I got a little squirt of glue come out there, but that's okay. And then we're actually going to set this aside. So don't worry about it for right now. Just set it aside. Make sure nothing's, no glue popped out and it's not going to stick your pages together. But basically, we have one, two, th one, two, three, four, five, and your front and back covers. Okay, so just set that aside and grab your, um, the covers, let's see, the paper for your covers and the two either cardboard pieces that you have. See, here's where my ATG gun is going to come in handy. I take my ATG and just put a little adhesive on the on one side of your come on ATG. My glue isn't coming out. Why not? Well, that'll be fine for this one. And I just center it on the back of your cover. So I want that to be my cover. So I'm going to take this and just kind of center it on the back of here. It doesn't have to be perfect because we just want it to have at least a half an inch all the way around. That's how we're going to um, make sure that this uh, cover is completely sealed. And um, uh, so you do the same thing to your um, the front and your back. I'll be right back.